then uh, NGO perspectives are also very important in this issues brief on innovation and uh, uh, the knowledge dimension from scientific and technological uh, community which uh, comprises research, education, and innovation is also very important and uh, Robert Bollard from uh, the information habitat has co contributed some important aspects if you want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, this uh, open source uh, aspects of innovation for sustainable development you could have as well. <coughs> Hi, uh, thanks. Uh, didn't know that I was going to be called on. <laughs> you usually find something to say. Um, yeah, Information Habitat was uh, created in the lead up to Rio and really is based on the vision that what is, what we the key shift in development path in, uh, that came out of, that really needed to come out, and in many ways did independently, was the transition to an essentially carbon-free digital platform that has very different properties in terms of participation, in terms of access to information, in terms of scarcity, uh, that information has zero mass, it has zero physical size, and so it's not constrained by the laws of conservation of mass and energy, and it's a free good. Uh, so there's, you know, I see it too as looking at recognizing this information universe as another realm of the natural world which until <coughs> very recently only scholars and sages really had access to. So the, the opportunities and implications of that are tremendous and I think you know, I'm not as good at writing documents as you are <laughs> so, uh, you know, or promoting them. But I think this is one of the critical issues that's still missing in front of us here. Which is, is the fundamental shift. And uh, as it turned out, the first web page was uploaded a week before the third prep run for Rio. So now there's more than a trillion. And I don't think anything has grown that rapidly in the last 20 years. And yet it's, it's really, and, and in many ways it's not just in the Rio process but also across the board. So when the UN had its Delivering as One report a few years ago, the internet was barely mentioned, although it's the natural vehicle for that. Anyhow, uh, I'm happy to talk some more, but I think the, the issue was sort of how, the, the, how this transforms our relationships with each other, particularly in terms of participation, but also in terms of accountability. Uh, for um, the ability to really have the capacity to put together, for example, identify external costs in a, in a meaningful way. So. Yes, I fully agree. And it's really uh, this uh, information and communication technologies that are at our hand now that really make the difference uh, with regard to uh, the first Earth Summit in uh, Rio 1992. And uh, even at the Earth Summit in 1992, there has been a lot of mention of innovation. And it's really when uh, preparing for this issues brief on innovation, when uh, I looked at the document, at the uh, Agenda 21, it was surprising how often uh, innovation was uh, uh, referred to and uh, in how uh, really sophisticated terms it was been uh, made so that if all the provisions of agenda 21 would have been implemented uh, it would be really already uh, the uh, implement innovation system in place that we are now calling uh, for again uh, but uh, the idea is now really that uh, the Rio plus 20 earth summit has the potentials to bring about substantial change and innovation. And uh, the main point of our issues brief is uh, this uh, UN Civil Society Partnership Formula 15, 15, 15. And you can see here the graph uh, which somehow uh, demonstrates the main idea. It is that the, main, uh, the UN system after World War II has been built on member states as the main pillars. And at that time it was okay, 
member state had resources uh, and the work was not so complex as it is today. But uh, now, 60, 70 years later, uh, the world is much more complex and uh, with these uh, many interactions uh, which are non-governmental but uh, are border spending, are global, uh, with this uh, whole uh, opportunities that we have with internet uh, for communication and interaction at, at very low costs, uh, everybody is empowered to uh, get involved in uh, global affairs. And also every, uh, the, nowadays, uh, there are more financial resources uh, and also intellectual resources uh, residing with uh, global citizens and in civil society uh, or in uh, domains where uh, the government cannot uh, directly influence. And so there's a need to direct these uh, resources in an innovative way into the UN system. And uh, global citizens and their resources for ad addressing global ch challenges, they are manifold. It's, uh, of course, it's also about money, it's the financial resources, and if we look, for instance, uh, at the Forbes list, uh, there are about 1,200 billionaires uh, around the world, and uh, there's a lot of uh, wealth accumulated in the hands uh, of uh, civil society, of private individuals, which uh, are not uh, used, uh, are not at hand for addressing global challenges, but with a cultural shift uh, and uh, with a shift in values and more global civic engagement, global social responsibility of individuals, we are convinced that also financial resources can be channeled towards the UN system and global sustainable development efforts. And of course, a very important resource is knowledge, uh, academic knowledge, but also knowledge uh, with regard to social innovations and uh, really uh, knowledge that can be produced by uh, very uh, normal individual people who see a, a certain uh, issue with regard to low carbon lifestyle and this kind of things. And uh, when uh, duplicated millions or hundreds of millions of times really make a big change in our way uh, of globally addressing uh, sustainable development and climate change and other global issues. And there are emotional resources, it's hard power, political will, courage, and uh, new ways of communications beyond the borders, uh, which can enrich the UN system. And here it's really this uh, Rio Plus 20 Global Youth Music Contest that we think that really can, has the potentials to make a change uh, for the UN system and can really provide already here for Rio Plus 20 the hard power uh, to build momentum uh, for more committed action in Rio, but uh, this uh, initiative will develop further and uh, in the long run it's really some kind of hard power uh, generator for the UN system and for global civic engagement. And volunteering is a very important issue uh, because uh, there are very many people around the world uh, which uh, with time, with uh, compassion, with uh, uh, the will to contribute, but we have to establish channels and uh, also documentation systems that acknowledge these contributions and uh, bring uh, them into coherence. And we are also in contact with uh, the, the United Nations Volunteers Program is doing a great job in this uh, direction and they are going to present tomorrow uh, Volunteer Action Counts. Uh, uh, is a very big initiative in the run up to Rio Plus 20 and we will link our efforts. So we will try to document uh, or to connect our documentation systems with, uh, with their information systems uh, so that uh, there will be really established uh, global uh, documentation system of uh, sustainable development efforts of uh, uh, different types of stakeholders. And here you see this uh, green uh, arrow into the UN system with the 15-15-15 number, it's uh, the uh, UN Civil Society uh, Resource Mobilization Partnership formula, which says that uh, at Rio plus 20, the global civil society should on the one hand commit uh, to mobilize 15 billion euros and 15 million volunteers by the year 2015 for UN-led sustainable development efforts 
and on the other hand request new forms of participation in global sustainable development governance. And uh, this um, is somehow the conceptual framework for uh, massive uh, uh, civic engagement and uh, volunteering and philanthropy uh, efforts towards the uh, supporting the UN system and uh, the Rio Plus 20 issues cluster of innovation had a chance to submit the uh, linking points uh, between this initiative and the Rio Plus 20 zero, uh, zero draft of the outcome document in an uh, issues cluster submission and uh, happily the uh, major group NGO forwarded these uh, comments into the official process as uh, standpoints of the major group NGOs. And uh, at the, uh, in the annex of the issues brief, you can see these points uh, where it is really uh, uh, the comments show how the outcome document should look like that such a 15-15-15 uh, UN civil society partnership could work. For instance, in the first uh, paragraph, in this uh, preamble, uh, it should be that it's not only we, the heads of state and government, having met in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, from 20 to 22nd of June 2012, resolve to work together uh, for a prosperous, secure and sustainable future, but in partnership with global citizens from all around the world. So this is already uh, this paradigm shift that would be needed uh, in the minds of the uh, representatives of government in Rio, that they see uh, every global citizen as partner in these efforts and that it is reflected also in the outcome document.